I'm not trying to over dramatize this, but that was um, that was alarming. Uh. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we close out season six with Jeff Goldblum. You know him from iconic roles in films like The Fly, Jurassic Park, Independence Day, and many more. You can catch him in The Mountain, which is headed to the Venice Film Festival. And if all that weren't enough, he's releasing his debut jazz album this fall with his band, the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra. Jeff Goldblum, welcome to the show. Thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you with spicy food? I, in my life, I'm an, an adventurous eater. I mean, I, there's nothing I haven't tried. After I moved around to Pittsburgh, I went, hmm, Thai, what's this? It's Indian, what's this? I like it. Now, I like to be careful, but with one thing or another, vocal cords, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm not gonna bore you with it. So, I'm supposed to not have spicy food, food these days, as per my uh, voice doctor, but, I have a strategy, which is that when you get there, I'm gonna nibble, maybe. That's a... Uh, is that a good, is that, is that uh, cheating? It's a worn path, and here's the deal. There's no rules here. It's not the Olympics. The no. people seem to respect the people who commit a little bit more to the wings, but you know what? What do you have to prove? Yeah, I don't think stoicism or competitiveness, that's not part of my... I, I don't have it. I can take it. I can take it. Or I don't need, you know. And competitiveness, if I'm on that wall of shame, it's you know sad about music. The wall of I know, of course I know. And I, you know, with that little sequence that you play and add people, it's sad and it's shameful. And that music is, you don't want to be part of that, but why do I care? Why, well, why? we have formidable opponents in front of us, the hottest vegan chicken wings in the history of the world. You ready to do it one last time for season six, Jeff Goldblum? Yes, I am. I like all your, uh, all your uh, gestures. Still fried, mm -hmm. but uh, what is it? Te tempeh or tofu or something like that? It's tempeh. 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 Tempeh wings. Okay. All right. Uh, you're beginning. Oh wow! It's the howler monkey. Ah, oh, come on! This is supposed to be the, the baby level. Okay. You know, so so I tasted it on my tongue already. So apropos of nothing, my dad is very excited for today's interview and for the first time in six seasons, he has a request. He wants me to ask you about one of his favorite shows that he says never got a chance to shine. I have an idea, let me guess. 10 Speed Brown Shoe. It is 10 Speed and Brown Shoe. I knew it, I knew it. How did you know that? i um, thinking your age, your dad, and you know, Bill Clinton, not to name, drop names, but uh, uh, the, one of the times I met him, one of the couple of times I met him, he was like, Jeff, I'd like a lot of your work. I'm doing impersonation. I like a lot of your work, but I never missed an episode of 10 Speed and Brown Shoe. That's what he said. Why do you think guys like Bill Clinton and my dad like 10 Speed Brown Shoe? It was a well-liked show. We did 13 episodes. Stephen J. Cannell uh, did it. Do you know what other shows he did in your trivial? He was the mastermind behind the Rockford Files, James Garner. He also did Greatest American Hero with William Catt. Who can sing the uh, theme song to that? I'm looking around the room. I don't have high no hopes. No one, really? Okay. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. He da 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 say so good. That was it. You better warm me this time. Now it's heartbeat, hot sauce. Yep. You got nice teeth too, look at that. I actually don't. I think once I get a bag, I'm fixing these. Get a bag? You know. So, what are, is that what the kids say? What do you yeah, get? Get a big money. payday, yeah. Oh, get a bag. I never heard that. And there you go. Really? Well, what's mm -hmm. wrong with the uh, chompers? I don't know. I've always been kind of self conscious about it. I feel like I have I to see fans. those. That's what, uh, you know, I see that. Mm -hmm. I think they're fine and dandy. I appreciate that, Jeff. Well, anyway. Um, uh, hey, true or false? I've never had a cavity or a filling. I'm going to say that that's true. Absolutely true. Now there might be some chicken, some tempeh in it, but uh, don't mistake that for a cavity. That's amazing. Uh, You're a medical marvel. Okay, don't go too far. Okay, <laughs> ready? Okay, you already did it. I already did you, it. You're, you're left un... Uh, Unbothered. Uh, 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 mm. 
All right, Jeff Goldblum, you're a man of many mysteries, not the least with food. You seem to be equal parts gourmand and health nut, adventurous at heart, but you also have these idiosyncratic dietary preferences. What do you think is Pittsburgh's greatest contribution to America's culinary canon? <laughs> yeah, I like the way you talk. Um, I'm from Pittsburgh, of course, and uh, I was never part of the blue collar, you know, food culture there. But you know, Isley's, for this is going to be only inter of interest to people of maybe some nostalgic regional uh, uh, sensibilities. But um, there used to be a place, Isley's, when I was growing up that was fantastic. Fantastic. And they had ice cream cones. It was a cone. You didn't get it. I don't think you could get it in a cup. It was a cone. But it was fashioned in some kind of high uh, mountain, a little skinny mountain. Oh, it's great. And all different flavors. Fantastic. So Isley's, I think, was that. But then Isley's also had chipped ham. Have you ever heard of such a thing? I've never had chipped ham. It was, yeah, I haven't heard it referred to or seen it around anywhere besides Pittsburgh then. I don't know if they have it now. Chipped ham <gasps> was great. I don't know what kind of ham it was, but they put it on a slicer. You'd see right in France when you bought it, and they put it in a piece of paper, you know. I'll have a half a pound of chipped ham and very thin sliced. I guess it was ham and chipped. I guess that was the, you know, the thinness of the slices. It's great. And you'd, we'd take it home and make sandwiches out of it. And then we called it Sloppy Joe's, but I know you know and everyone knows Sloppy Joe's are ground meat with tomato-y sauce. But we called barbecue sauce, maybe even they sold barbecue sauce that you meant to put on it, and heat it up. Hot chipped ham with barbecue, barbecue sauce. sauce. Oof. Fantastic. It was fantastic. It's mustardy. I like all kind of mustard. Mm -hmm. I love mustard. <laughs> Quit gawking at me, man. So as we touched on in your intro, you play in a jazz band and regularly perform at Rockwells and Los Feliz. Jazz has a language that's all its own, so what I want to do is throw some jazz club slang at you, and if you know the word, maybe you can explain it to the audience out there and use it in a sentence. Does that sound good? I love the game. I love any kind of game. Let's go. Noodling. Noodling, yes. What do I use it first in a sentence or explain it? Explain it by way of using it in a sentence. It doesn't matter. It's not you, it there's rules. no rules. It, yeah. it seems fluid. Uh, a noodling. I'm just going to sit here. I'm just, a, what am I playing? I don't know. I'm just noodling around. I'm just noodling. I'm just doing some noodling, which means mm, with no particular purpose, mm, not, in, not no particular intensity, mm, you know. What are clams? Well, we know what we know what clams clams are, but in the jazz, if it's Context. used in jazz, oh, I think I think it's a wrong note. I think it's a bad note. Of course, some say in jazz there's no mistake if you incorporate it, you know, cleverly. Uh, uh, but I think a clam is like a a bad note. I'm not sure of that. Is that it? Bing, 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 bing. And finally, can you teach me how to scat? Because all I know is that skibbity bee ba ba da bo. I just know that one. You, you've done it. That's it. But are you repeat? Is that something you've repeated before? Scat. Make it up now. You know that's Ma the scat it man. Ba da ba da bee ba 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 da bo. Ba 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 da bo. Ba da bee ba 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 da bo. But you're very good. Skip it, I get it. I get it. <laughs> you can't once once you get started, it's hard to stop. So that skittle of of bubbles is very good. You know, anything scat is any anything that you that you make up that's improvisatory, that's uh, 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 lyricless. You know, it's like that. I learned to listen to this. I learned to you know Danny K. You remember Danny K? Oh, really? Really? Does anybody know Danny K? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Anyway, Danny Kaye was a movie actor and a, and a musician, but he had a scat bit that I memorized. It's, it went like this, and I still do it to this day, and my kids seem to like me to do it. That's it. Son of Zombie. Ooh. It's quite delicious. Son of Zombie wing sauce. 
So you've been in some of the biggest films ever made, <laughs> but you also have achieved this ubiquitous internet fame. What's the difference between a fan who sees you on the street and recognizes you from the latest Wes Anderson movie versus somebody who approaches you because they want a selfie with the gold bloom? Wow, I love that whole question. There are many types, but you know, oftentimes, as you suggest, I think in the question, they can be less, you know, um, knowledgeable about, you know, cinema, you know, hey, it's the Goldblum. Or, or you get people who say, somebody yesterday said to me, you know, are you still doing that acting uh, thing? You get that too. And I'll look at uh, hashtag Jeff Goldman on my Instagram, and I'll, right. see if, I'll see if they post them. Yeah. What amuses you or disturbs you when you read your own Instagram comments? They don't seem to get mm, unpleasant, from what I gather. Um, How about when people call you daddy? Does sweet. that make you feel good? Oh, sweet. Isn't mm -hmm. that uh, sexy talk? Uh, I yeah, think they it's mean nice. Sexy talk, yeah. And I am a daddy, literally. So even if they mean, hey, daddy, or... or Daddy, I am daddy. And if they mean zaddy, sometimes they say zaddy. Yeah. I, what's that mean? Uh, I think that that's a little bit really more, more hot. This is more more on this yeah, side yeah, of more the more on this side of, of the daddy, daddy. Yeah. spicy daddy. Yeah, I like sure I like it. <laughs> zaddy. Los calientes. Mm -hmm. I believe that's Spanish. This is my favorite part. The silence that falls upon the room as we're talking. My favorite part. My favorite part of making a movie is when they go, I don't know if they do it anymore. We gotta get room tone, the, the sound guys would know about. We gotta get room tone. Everybody stops where they are. They can't move. Everybody that's been worn different hats and done different jobs, they all stop. And the guy, I love these guys, the guy, this guy does that. And for about 30 seconds or sometimes they everybody stops and there's total silence. All right, Jeff, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Graham, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll bust out the laptop, I'll show you the picture, and then you just tell me the beer story. Does that sound good? You talk laptop, fast, please. man. Please. Laptop, please. You really are a fast talker. Are you keeping up? Yes, yes. Oh, anyway, what am I picking this up for? It's Jeff, too, too soon. What do you remember about hanging out with Quavo? Did he get you into Gucci belts? I love that Quavo. This is in Saint Laurent, the um, store where I. Yes, where I got these pink pants, these soft pink pants, and these boots, which we call the uh, Jod per boots, with the high, not that I need any more height, but with the highish heel. I got those in that very store, and one day I saw him there, also shopping. He was very sweet. He said, oh, you know, I'm an artist also, and I really like your, I said, oh my gosh, I sit at your feet. It was just hello, hello, and ho, 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 and you know, we just breathed in each other's essence. So I absorbed it and made it part of my own, and, and uh, I'll never forget it. Do you have any opinion of this 25-foot bare-chested statue in Potter's Field? I love it. I love it. It's, uh, what is it, 330 pounds, I think they said, and it's 25 feet tall, and it's fantastic. And it's, it was done for the uh, to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the original Jurassic Park movie. I've seen many renditions of renderings of me in that scene, and that's a fine one, sure. This particular pose, it's immortal. You know, it's all over the internet. Do you get a kick out of that? I do, yeah. I wouldn't call it out if it's immortal. Immortal means it'll never... Never die. Well, time will tell, I guess, right, Jeff? Well, time is fleeting, as we know. Even in the largest, you had Neil deGrasse Tyson on here, I saw. I did. He will tell you, call him up. Uh, yes, it's all our, our little lives and that little thing are cosmic calendar-wise. It's just a snap. Snippity snap. And then, um, you know, and the whole thing is gonna go out at some point too. Which makes it such a miracle that you and I found each other to sit at this table and eat wings on YouTube. I agree entirely. Miracle in the scientific sense, in the cosmic, in the real factual sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, we don't have to look anywhere else in, you know, nincompoopery besides the facts of the real universe to be astounded with uh, 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 the miraculous. What the heck is this? Black garlic from Carolina Reaper. Fine and dandy. 
Sensing a change in demeanor a little bit. It sobers you up. It can sober you up this stuff. Goodbye. That's the last of that I want to eat. You know. <laughs> so my guess is there isn't an interview that goes by where you don't get asked about Jurassic Park. It has such a large imprint on pop culture. There are dozens of articles that talk about the lore surrounding Jurassic Park. So what I want to do is give you some of the widespread mythology, and you can tell me if it was fact or fiction. I read that the animatronic T-Rex would sometimes malfunction and turn on on its own, frightening everybody on set. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. They said, be careful, everybody. They gave us a safety talk. I don't know if it scared everybody, but the safety talk s scared me enough to be serious about it. They said, don't go near it because, you know, it's all mm, computers and buttons and, then, and it may have a mind of its own and, and uh, you don't want to, and that's a really heavy thing. It's actually heavy and you don't want it to fall, fall on you. Speaking of the T-Rex, is it true that originally in that rain scene, you were supposed to run away from the T-Rex, but there was a last second adjustment to the script where you distracted the dinosaurs so that Grant could save the kids? That's absolutely right. Steven Spielberg is a genius, but I, and I, I hate to take cr credit for anything, so, so I can't really, it was him that molded it and okayed it, but I did have an idea. I thought my character, it was written in the script that my character did exactly kind of what the lawyer did. And I was another scared person who just ran, didn't know what they were doing, but ran away from this scene. And then the the T-Rex chased after me and, and poked me and, and I had this bad leg, which led me to take my shirt off and suffer for the rest of the movie. Uh, and that was it. I said to Stephen, you know, I have an idea. What if my character didn't just <laughs> get so scared, but was kind of heroic and brave and said, um, it's gonna result in the same blocking and the same idea, but said, I'm gonna distract this thing. It's Alan Grant, Sam Neill, you take, get the kids and protect them. Come on. And I light the flare. I don't think I wasn't supposed to light the flare. Come on, dinosaur, chase me. Chase me and get, get away from the kids. He said, yeah, let me think about that. I don't know. It was on all, it wasn't the last second, but in that day, it was all on that day. And he finally said, let me see you do that. How would that go? You know, I showed him. Okay. Do, do, do that, try that. That's how it went. 1610 heat, anyway, okay. I know I look very dainty when I, when I do this, you know. That's okay, I don't care. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's horrible, where's my gut bucket? Oh, I know the spit bucket. The spit bucket is when, you know, for heaven's sakes. How dare you? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's uh, provocative, yet, mm, yet uh, accessible. Yeah, goodbye. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. The milk, oh, milk is the antidote to spicy. That's what you're meant to do. If you really have a spicy, you know, That's why it's encounter. on the table. Okay, all right. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. So you've said that one of the great foundational lessons that you learned from legendary acting coach Sandy Meisner is that you're only interesting to the extent which you're interested. You're only interesting to the extent that you're interested. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, he said something like that, that's right. How has that advice helped you outside of your acting career? It's a very, very good question. Well, you know, the danger in acting is that you go, oh boy, I'm being witnessed. Uh, I need to create some effect. I need to do something about myself and so your attention kind of can easily get trapped this away. And that, 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 that's, uh, that's not so good. But yes, in life too, I think it's healthy. In the sh short time, as we've said, we have, so foolish it would be to not if every day ingest and attend to what the heck is going on and all the things that you're probably never gonna get to, but why not continue to be engaged and interested in, uh, in, in our life and in our world and our universe? Don't you think so? I believe so. Yeah, I do too. I do too. <laughs> da bomb, beyond insanity, it says. 
Hang on, hang on. <laughs> you got it, Jeff. Oh, 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 that's terrible. It just, I had it in my mouth. I thought, nothing, nothing. Then it, then it hit, um, it hit down. I'm yeah. not trying to over dramatize this, but that was, uh, that was alarming. So I want to take a wing to focus on fashion. Okay. I know that you've described yourself as a fancy lad and according to Esquire, the new elder statesman of style. So what I want to do is hit you with some fashion trends that are bubbling up in 2018. And I'm just curious about the Jeff Goldblum take. Does that sound good? Okay. All right. First things first, who wore this Prada shirt better? You or Pusha T? Oh, that's a, that's a sweet. Yeah. He's got an under under thing there going on. And a little bit of a layer situation. It looks fantastic in it. I, I give the prize to him, hands hands down. What are your thoughts on Kanye West Desert Storm Yeezys? I really don't know these days. You see so many, my eyes are over full with, with the designs and things. Look, looks fine and dandy. I like that off-white thing. I know I'm talking too much about it, but fine and dandy. Uh, there, there you go. You like off-white. How about these, do you have a pair of these Balenciaga triple S's? I think you do. I have this shoe. So this is the one shoe that, it's the dad comfortable shoe, but it's crazy. My wife, Emily, when I first brought home those gray shoes, she says, what, what are those? And she laughed at me. And then she infected my our son with that same idea. I was the butt of the joke for a while. And I'd come into the room with those shoes and, and Charlie would laugh. He'd go, big shoes, big shoes. And they'd both be laughing at me, big shoes. Uh, but then something happened. She became aware or something. We were ahead of the curve. She showed up with a pair in her closet the other day. They're colorful. They're not the gray. They're some color. They're not this color, but they're like that. And she loves them, and I love to see her in them. She's so sexy in them. She's got the most, she's a, she's a gymnast. She was a, she's, and she still possesses the most beautiful body I've ever seen in my life. And her legs are per perfect sculptures. And she puts on a little socklet, uh, the laser, and she puts on that shoe with a dr dress. And we've been together seven years, but I'm still fascinated. Fascinated, deeply fascinated by her. So this next one is the Hellfire Fiery Fool. Oh God, I don't like it already. Make it stop. <laughs> I don't like the pieces of orange. I don't like it the way it looks. I'm scared. I like the way Charlie goes, I'm scared. I'm scared. He's, he admits freely when he's frightened. I find it so heartbreaking. Anyway, I'm very frightened. I know it's good at this point, but as soon as I mix a little saliva with it and start, start the journey. I just got two chills, you saw. So Jeff, the fly came out in 1986, and yeah. do you know that its lasting cultural impact includes getting name checked in hip hop lyrics from everyone from Childish Gambino to Kendrick Lamar? Did you know that, Jeff? No, I've known that it's been referenced here and there. Somebody sent me this, that. I didn't know Childish Gambino or Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. I don't think I did. The reference is always something like flyer than Jeff Goldblum or something to that effect, which I think is a nice pun, but it's also a little tip to your drip, Jeff. What's that mean for heaven's sakes? You your swag, your... your swag. You're just dripping. Like, look at you right now, you're dripping. Oh, dripping with style. A tip to my drip. Oh, I'm gonna pepper that, I'm gonna use that. Uh, well, good, good, good. Lovely. I'm very flattered, honored, and humbled. So this one is off of Childish Gambino's sweatpants. Year off, got no rules, tripping off them toadstools. More green than my Whole Foods, and I'm too fly. Jeff Goldblum. I like it. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. 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 Let me give you this bar from Kendrick Lamar. Okay, and then I'll give you another bit of my poetry. Draped in some fly shit, call me Jeff Goldblum. Cold, my style making my nose run. I like it. I'll give you a bit of poetry back. Mm-hmm. 
elbow room, cried Daniel Boone. Mm. Lovely, that's, Jeff. That's the last stanza of that poem. It's called Elbow Room, I think. Uh, but I've, I've, I've made it to say it rhymes better. Elbow Room, cried Jeff Goldblum. Whoa. Yeah, I can make my own. I don't need anybody else to make a Jeff Goldblum. Uh, um, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were shaking something up, I know. All right, Jeff, this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. Ah, what you was, don't what? have to if you don't want to, Jeff. Uh, I have to. I, I have to. I'm, uh, as you know, I'm deeply competitive and virile. <laughs> virile yeah, to the last though. drop. Mm, what, what, uh, what, what product used to be? Is that? Oh, that's the one. That's I was, the I was one, shaking yeah. up on it. Okay, uh, so I don't need to. Then I won't. Okay, I'll, this, but this already has it in it. It already has it in it. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty, believe you me. Okay. Uh, this is the last one, last dab read. I, I'm not going to be part of the wall of shame. I've already, as soon as I take this bite, I'm I'm not. You're across the finish line. I've made the Adrian, yo Adrian, I did it. I, got, I took more than I wanted, but okay. Well, here we go. Here we go. Uh oh. Here we go. Nothing. Nothing. Something. <laughs> okay, Jeff, here we are at the end of the line, and as Hot Ones fans know, it's out with the old and in with the new every season. So some of these hot sauces are going to be retired. Really? But before we send them off to pasture, I think we give them the tribute that they deserve. Okay. I'd love for you to go down the line and rate each one of these hot sauces on a scale from zero to 10 gold blooms. Yes, yes. Taking season six out in style. Let's start with the Howler Monkey. Howler Monkey. I give that Shake Well, I like Shake Well. I give that 10 out of 10 gold blooms. That's as high as you can go. Very, very good. I don't know what we're gonna retire. Oh, I like this really. I like the way that comes out. I like the whole thing. Ontario, Canadian, 10 gold blooms. Pirate's Lantern. I am the Pirate King, and it is, it is a glorious thing to be a Pirate King. The Pirate King, 10 gold blooms out of a possible 10 gold blooms. I used to like that R. Crumb comics. 10 gold blooms out of a possible 10 gold blooms. Los Calientes. I love all peoples of the world. We're all, after all, living on a little planet. 10 gold blooms out of a possible 10 gold blooms. I like that title, Black Garlic. It sounds sexy to me. 10 gold blooms out of a possible 10 gold blooms. If you were John Houston, <laughs> I was Humphrey Bogart, you know, we would knock back a couple of things and be manly men. Ten gold plums out of a bus, ten gold plums. Oh, the bomb. Of course, I don't know why da has an apostrophe after it. It's is something being left out of there, like chock full o nuts. This is a, a scary clown, of course, with the har harlequin print. I've always wanted a harlequin print. I've always wanted to be a harlequin printed something. 10 gold blooms out of a possible 10 gold blooms. Well, this is the last, the last dab redux. This is your, this is your thing, first we feast. I wouldn't have known that had I not paid attention to some of the fine print. Well, this of course gets 11 gold blooms. The only time I've ever given that. Congratulations out of a possible 10 gold blooms, 11. Gold blooms. Well, if Jeff says it, then it's gospel. Then it's the truth. And look at you, Jeff Goldblum, all the way through the vegan chicken wing gauntlet, closing out season six in style. I listen to my vocal cords. They sound I'm as mellifluous and full throated as I've ever been. Maybe even more full throated I now. I think so, yes. And stayed off the wall of shame. I know you had a little bit of a fear. I did, I did. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Thank you, thank you. Not that I need to do this. I'm not. I'm uh, nothing. I'm. I'm no, no kind of salesman, but I am uh, going to the Venice Film Festival, like we said, to to premiere this movie, The Mountain, of which I'm very proud. It is a special item for those who may be interested in such a thing. <coughs> uh oh. <coughs> uh oh. It is, uh, it is very special. I have, uh, I, I love it. Likewise, uh, this, uh, this record with the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra. 
is coming out. I, I, I'm ecstatic over it. I, I, I love it. I feel bonded to you forever. This has been fantastic. Thank you, Jeff. Friends so for life. Great to meet you. We're friends for life. Thank you. Congratulations on season six. Good job, Jeff. Good job. Thank you, baby. Come on. That was fun. Wasn't that Did fun? You have a good time? Oh, baby. Come on. It's the best time I've ever had in my life. <laughs> you got something useful there, here and there. We're, we're a good team. But this is us. Okay, good. This is us. Look at you with your. So, speaking of no socks, so you know I was I almost going to say that. Well, I was and look at your that. hairy ankles. I know. I went, who, who has hairy ankles that hairy? But you. I do. You. I have hairy ankles. But I wouldn't say lose them. Keep that hair. You think? Harry and the Hendersons, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a nice shirt, oh, yeah. Jeff. You like it? I do. I like it a lot. Prada. You remind me of my friend, that actor, uh, the son of James Caan, Scott Caan. You know Scott Caan? No, but I'm going to look him up after this. Oh, yeah. You know, Scott Caan, he's, uh, he's been on Hawaii 5 all this time. He's the son of James Caan. James Caan, of course, is starred most famously in what movie? I don't know, Jeff. James Caan was one of the Corleone family, and of course mm. the Godfathers, which you've seen maybe not, or maybe you have many times. And um, he played which, which child? Michael Corleone was, of course, Al Pacino. Fredo was John Cazale. Um, Talia Shire was Connie, and of course, James Caan was... <laughs> James Caan was... He was known for the family of his hot temper, speaking of hot ones, and his large penis. He had a large penis <laughs> in the movie, in the, in the book and the, and the movie, yeah. One million two. One million three. Yeah, that's pretty good form, Phil. Thanks. Where'd you get that cool shirt? You didn't hear? Hot Ones merch. It's available now. I thought you only wore Where's Waldo shirts. I used to wear Where's Waldo shirts. One.